Shri Sachin Savnisji, who is uh, on the dais and one of the pillars of Prabuddha Bharat, respected Shri Nandakumarji, and we also have amongst us uh, the Vice Chancellor of the Jawaharlal Nehru University. Other uh, dignitaries present over here and friends from this beautiful city of Belagavi. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be here amongst you. And uh, at the outset, let me thank the organizers for having me here and uh, suggesting me that I should be speaking on Swaraj at 75. Friends, uh, this country, although we talk about Ajadi Ka Amrut Mahotsav and Swaraj at 75, is a country which is known for no full stops. So our journey is a continuous journey. But yes, this particular year provides us an occasion to look back, to take stock of the situation, to appreciate as to from where we had started and also to rededicate ourselves towards achieving our common goal, which is Prabuddha Bharat. So this is a journey, an endless journey, I would say, an eternal journey towards the idea of Prabuddha Bharat. Many must be knowing that Pandit Dindal Upadhyay ji had very beautifully told us about this eternal journey where he described that we are moving always from the past through the present to the future. So there is a connection. It's not that uh, we can think about our past in a compartmental manner. It's a continuous process. But still, revisiting the idea of India when we are observing the Ajadi Ka Amrut Mahotsa certainly is very enlightening and therefore let me congratulate the Prabuddha Bharat for having this conclave organized. We are moving towards a bright future and we have started from a glorious past. But the present is also important. And when I talk about the present, I recall uh, an incident during the 2014 campaign of the Lok Sabha, where we were interacting with some young uh, students. And at 20 something, after some initial interactions, posed bluntly, kind of, a question before me. He said, sir, do you know what our generation wants? I said, perhaps I know because my son is almost of your age. But I was curious to know as to what he wanted to suggest. And therefore, I requested him, why don't you tell me what your generation wants? He said, simple, hey, sir, we want 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I said, it sounds like a puzzle. Could you please explain? He said, sir, it's very simple. We are looking for five-figure salary, four-wheeler, three-bedroom hall kitchen, two kids, and one wife. The certitude with which he told me, the way he defined in a very articulated manner the aspirations of the younger generation, one may look at it in a negative fashion and say, oh, these are very materialistic objectives before his or her life. But one may also look at it in a very positive way, saying that at least he knows where he wants to go. I mean, when I was of his age, perhaps we were clueless and we were kind of groping in the dark. But the younger generation is very focused. 
it's very decisive, it's very confident, and it is not shy of articulating as to what exactly they are up to, which is very, very remarkable. And therefore, this is, in a way, a slice of new India. I, I, I won't uh, generalize that everybody is thinking in this way. But yes, a significant section of the younger generation definitely thinks in this manner, whether you like it or not. And therefore, when we talk about this uh, India tomorrow, which, as I said, is very confident, ambitious, aspirational, we certainly have to take a look as to from where we did start. And then uh, I think uh, naturally the thought of as to how circumstances create a situation where we miss our way comes to our mind. Recently, the Indian Council for Cultural Relations, as a part of its ongoing uh, Ajadi Ka Amrut Mahotsav program, invited a group of 19 young leaders from about eight countries, all below 35. There were uh, MPs from Jamaica, from Sri Lanka, a minister also from Sri Lanka, a BBC correspondent from Tanzania, couple of professors, young professors from Uzbekistan, a group of bloggers and writers from Bhutan. And when at the end of their tour, a Jamaican uh, delegate was asked as to what is your impression about India at the end of this eight-day tour, she said, India is a sleeping superpower. That once again underscores the need for Prabuddha Bharat. Because we have to awaken, we have to tell this Bharat, even now and perhaps repeatedly, again and again, that what exactly you are, what kind of strength you possess, what kind of uh, objectives collectively, as a civilization, we all have before our eyes. And therefore, uh, as I said, the importance of this eternal journey can never be undermined. When we talk about this journey and also about the past from where we started, naturally the question of our identity comes to our minds. Who are we? And friends, uh, maybe you are aware that uh, there were times when sociologists world over used to consider identity as a very primordial kind of a concept. And therefore it was not recognized, which is why perhaps it was a fashion, and even today some old timers continue with that fashion, to say, to describe cities like New York or Mumbai as melting pot, where all your other identities continue to melt and you become a part of a pot, which is the melting pot. No more. Today, the sociologists world over say that this is a wrong description. It should be salad bowl, where you retain your identity, whatever your identity, and there are multiple identities with which we live, and then all our identities, different is become a part of a bowl, which is why salad bowl. <coughs> but perhaps the right description about India is uh, that of a banyan tree. A thousand branched banyan tree with uh, some kind of endless diversity, but one common trunk. And this diversity again, many a times we mistake it as a, some kind of different identities of ours and then we come together and then it becomes kind of a 
common identity of all. Perhaps that is a wrong way of looking at it. Our diversity, and you would appreciate after we go deep into our traditions, our culture, our lifestyles, even our language for that matter, that our diversity is in fact just the diverse manifestation of the innate unity that combines us. हमारे देश में इतनी सारी भाषाएं हैं और भाषाओं में बहुत सारी कहावतें भी होती हैं। तो अगर हम कहावतों का अध्ययन करेंगे और कई लोगों ने किया है वडोदरा के एक अध्येता ने लगभग ऐसी 1500 कहावतों की एक किताब बनाई है कि जो समान अर्थ ध्वनित करती है नाच ना आए आंगन टेढ़ा सिमिलर सेइंग्स एंड प्रोवर्ब आर देयर इन डिफरेंट लैंग्वेजेस मराठी में है कन्नडा में भी होगा अखुमिया में होगा बंगाली में होगा तमिल में होगा सब जगह This was not because of some central government language department person issued a GR that you should have these kinds of sayings in your language. No. अगर हमारी कहावतों में समानता है तो उसका कारण यह है कि हमारी सोच में समानता है हमारी दृष्टि में समानता है और इसलिए ये जो एक विशाल वटवृक्ष का जो प्रतिमान है मैं मानता हूं कि भारत के वर्णन के लिए वो सबसे उचित और उपयुक्त प्रतिमान है ऐसे भारत के हम नागरिक हैं और हम सब मिलकर इसको अगर जरूरत है जैसे वो जमेकन डेलीगेट ने कहा कि इट्स ए स्लीपिंग सुपर पावर तो अगर कुछ लोग अभी भी सोए हुए हैं और हो सकता है सभागार में भी कुछ होंगे तो उनको जगाना हमारा काम है और देश में भी ऐसे सोए हुए हैं तो उनको भी जगाना हमारा काम है और जागते रहना भी हमारा काम है ऐसा नहीं है कि एक बार जग गया तो हम सोएंगे ही नहीं इतिहास में कई ऐसे उदाहरण हमारे हमें मिल, मिलेंगे कि हम जगे मगर दुर्भाग्यवश फिर सो गए तो ये प्रबुद्ध रहना मैं मानता हूं कि एक शाश्वत निरंतर आवश्यकता है इसकी अनदेखी नहीं होनी चाहिए योगी अरविंद जी ने बहुत अच्छे शब्दों में एक बार कहा था कि अवर पास्ट विथ ऑल इट्स फॉल्ट एंड डिफेक्ट शुड बी सैक्रेट टू अस नो डाउट बट द क्लेम्स ऑफ अवर फ्यूचर विथ इट्स इमीजिएट पॉसिबिलिटीज शुड पर बी मोर सैक्रेट टू अस वॉट ए ब्यूटिफुल मैसेज coming from shri arobindo and this is what is required prabuddh bharat ki avashyakta isliye hai ki is bharat ko batana ki bhaiya tum kyon kya ho aur us us aakalan ke abhav mein hi hum choti choti baaton mein ulajh jate hain wo ek mahabharat ki kahani shayad aap logo ko pata hogi bhi जिसमें जब युद्ध चल रहा है तो पांडवों के शिविर में एक बार अर्जुन श्री कृष्ण और युधिष्ठिर धर्मराज तीनों चर्चा कर रहे कि आज व्यूह रचना कैसे होनी चाहिए किस पद्धति से हमने कौरवों के हमले को झेलना है या उसके ऊपर प्रतिघात करना है तो चर्चा चल ही रही थी प्रातकाल का समय था युद्ध अभी तो शुरू होना ही था तो पता नहीं कहां से कौरवों के शिविर से ही होगा मगर एक एरो बाण आता है और युधिष्ठिर के मस्तक को लग जाता है जख्म स्वाभाविक रूप में हो जाती है खून बहने लगता है सभी लोग विचलित होते कि यह क्या चल रहा है युधिष्ठिर ने जब कहा कि ऐसी हमारी चर्चा चल रही है तो उसने अर्जुन को थोड़ा चिढ़ाया और कहा कि तुम्हारा वो गांडीव धनुष्य है और उसकी महानता के और गुणगान की बहुत सारी बातें आप करते रहते हैं अभी मैं खड़ा हूं और कोई आके मुझे इस पद्धति से बाण यहां पर लगता है खून बहता है तुम्हारे गांडीव का उपयोग क्या है उसको जला दो ऐसा बहुत थोड़ा अब्यूजिव भाषा में बोलता हो तो अर्जुन विचलित हो जाता है और कहता है कि मैंने प्रण किया है कि मेरे गांडीव का जो अपमान करेगा उसकी मैं 
हत्या करूंगा तो मुझे अभी भ्राता युधिष्ठिर को ही मारना पड़ेगा आई कैन नॉट हेल्प इट तो श्री कृष्ण कहता है कि थोड़ा ठंडा लीजिए थोड़ा बैठिए कूल डाउन चिल इन द प्रेजेंट लैंग्वेज तो अर्जुन कहता है मगर मेरी मेरे प्रण का क्या होगा आई हैव आई मीन इट इज माई वाव हाउ कैन आई डिसरिस्पेक्ट तो भगवान श्री कृष्ण कहते हैं कि देखिए आपको युधिष्ठिर को मारने की जरूरत नहीं आप उनको गाली प्रदान करो गाली देना ये भी एक मारने जैसा ही होता है उनके प्रति कुछ अपशब्द का उच्चारण करो तो अर्जुन वो कर देता है फिर चर्चा चलती रहती है फिर अर्जुन कहता है कि मेरा दूसरा भी एक प्रण था कि जो मेरे ज्येष्ठ भ्राता को गाली देगा उसकी मैं हत्या करूंगा तो अभी तो मुझे आत्महत्या करनी पड़ेगी क्योंकि मेरा प्रण है तो धर्मराज कहते हैं युधिष्ठिर कहते हैं कि इस तरीके से व्यवहार नहीं करते अभी ऐसा करो कि आप अपनी प्रशंसा करो ये भी एक दृष्टि से आत्महत्या ही हो जाती है आत्म प्रशंसा <coughs> कहने का तात्पर्य यह है कि हम अपने अपने विश्व में इतने उलझे हुए रहते हैं कि सामने कौरव खड़े हैं उनके साथ हमें सामना करना है इसको हम भूल जाते हैं अर्जुन जैसे भूल गए थे मैं मानता हूं कि ये जो पूरी भारतवर्ष की जनता के सम्मुख जो भी चुनौतियां होगी जो भी लक्ष्य उसके कारण हमारे सम्मुख आते होंगे उसका विस्मरण न हो यही है प्रबुद्ध भारत और इसके प्रति हमारी एक प्रतिबद्धता होना बहुत आवश्यक है इसका कारण यह है कि हमारे अतीत में अगर हम झांक कर देखेंगे फ्रॉम द पास्ट थ्रू द प्रेजेंट टू द फ्यूचर सो वॉट इज देयर इन द पास्ट आई एम श्योर मेनी ऑफ यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड अबाउट एंड रेड वट विल ड्यूरेंट हैड सेड इन वन ऑफ इज इन इन मेनी ऑफ इज बुक्स इन वन ऑफ इज वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट कोट्स एंड आई एम कोटिंग विल ड्यूरेंट ही सेज and this is required to know us as to what we are about which we more often than not forget will durant says india was the motherland of our race and sanskrit the mother of europe's languages she was the mother of our philosophy mother through the arabs of much of our mathematics mother through buddha of the ideals embodied in christianity mother through the village community of self government and democracy mother india in many ways is the mother of all of us ye hum keval apni atma pratishtha ko badhane ke liye main aapke samukh nahi keh raha hu wo to hai hi magar hamari jo vaishvik bhumika hai the global role that india is destined to play perhaps i would say that these kinds of quotations these kinds of observations coming from scholars like will durant should awaken us and should make us realize that what we were and how we will have to remember this without fail friends when we talk about swaraj at 75 as i said that the glory of the past should work as a fuel for our journey towards the future it is not just a purva gaurav not just eulogy for past simply to have that uh, feeling of being great that is critical but then it has a reason and i am saying this because there has been a tradition in our country which is of unfortunately in the intellectual world of india and especially post independence which is about self flagellation as what they call atma pratadana karte rehna khud ke prati galat bolte rehna hamare desh ke prati galat baatein karte rehna i was aghast there is a sri lankan social scientist who has written who had written this say 20 years before 
where he had mentioned that how South Asia is being looked at uh, in a very perverse manner by the Westerners. In one of the California University, 20 years before, there was a seminar. And what was the subject? The subject of the seminar was bride burning and sun preference traditions in India. What could be more pervert than this? And therefore, it is upon us to do away with these perversions and misperceptions. Again, I recall one of the responses of the visitors who were here under the ICCR just about three, four days back. They said India will have to tell its own story, which is very, very important. In a very articulated manner, in a very scholarly manner, we will have to reach out to the global community and tell what we are. We have to tell our own story. Nobody else is going to tell our story, which is why, again, Prabuddha Bharat. Friends, when uh, we talk about the present, I believe uh, several things naturally come to our mind, and especially when we are here celebrating the Ajadi Kamrut Mahotsav. Happily, we have a government and we find the reflections of the policies and the approaches of the government in the society at large as well. Because it was the need of the hour. Post-independence, if we look at the last 75 years, just within hardly 10 years post-independence, what was the refrain? People started saying, that the Gora in Angrish to chala gaya, magar kala abhi bhi hai. People started saying that while the Angrej has left, Angrejiyat continues in our country. And uh, I believe there is a change, no doubt. But the backlog, it's so huge that we will have to work over time to clear that and to realize that we have to bid a goodbye not only to the Angrej, but the Angrejiyat also, which still continues to be here in one way or the other. And therefore, especially, and there was a reference in the speech of uh, Honorable Governor, let's take the example of new education policy. It tells us, it reminds us about the idea of India. I mean, for the first time, perhaps, it is the demecolization of our education which is happening. The shadow of Macaulay continued to be there for so long. For the first time, the new education policy very clearly states that a sense of pride in the minds of the students about India's glorious past is something like a key objective before the education. I had the occasion of, uh, I mean, I had the good fortune of heading the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Education. And very recently, we uh, finished our work on textbook reforms. Many revealing things. I mean, we continue to eulogize the medieval history of our country for no logical reason whatsoever. And, I mean, if we just uh, measure the kind of uh, space allotted to various uh, eras of India's past, the medieval era is devoted maybe three chapters and 15 pages. And there are only four lines about Rajendra Chola and the Chola dynasty and the Chola Samraj. Empire of Cholas, or the Vijayanagar Samraj, or the Ahoms in Assam. I mean, we are made to think that uh, these are not important things. I am sure things are going to change and change for the better. The committee has presented its report to the parliament. I am sure 
the new textbooks that are now going to take shape in the light of the new education policy will do away with all these fallacies we were subjected to. And therefore, the decolonization of Indian mind, which unfortunately, even today, is an unfinished task, requires to be undertaken expeditiously. And while doing that, let us also understand that the first and foremost thing which we require to tell ourselves, imbibe deep in our minds, is the sense of ownership. Unfortunately, whether education, whether our public affairs, whether uh, government policies, have not been able to tell us and loudly and very clearly that this is your country and you are the owner of it. Remember, it is not somebody else's country. It is not the country of the union government or the state government. The city is not that of the mayor or the municipal com commissioner. The city is of the citizens. The country, the nation is of the people of that nation, we the people. But unfortunately, this sense we could not evolve very strongly as, was, as what was required post-independence. And if this sense really we are able to establish firmly in our minds, I'm sure we all can work towards because truly speaking, a glorious future awaits us. If I talk to you about uh, the innovation ecosystem that is taking place, Professor Dr. Jagdish Kumarji is here of the JNU. I'm sure he will uh, have several things to tell us. But let me share with you how the rustic wisdom plays an important role. And how decolonization is the need of the hour. Our uh, member of parliament, Tejasvi Surya, was telling me someday, he was traveling in some parts of Karnataka, and he went to a village where he met with a farmer, old person, and the farmer uh, he found a little bit agitated while his uh, young grandchild had just returned from the school there was some conversation between the grandpa and his uh, grandchild. And he was frowning at his grandchild. So Tejasvi asked him, Grandpa, what is wrong with you? Why are you so annoyed? He said that for months together we are waiting for rain. This particular region of Karnataka is known for scarcity of water, famine, several such challenges are there. And my young child comes from the school and keeps by hearting the poem, rain, rain, go away, rain, rain, go away. What is this? I am getting, I mean, extremely annoyed with that. Now, why, why this particular poem finds uh, a space in our... Uh, uh, school textbooks, I wonder. One of the very well-known uh, agriculturists in Maharashtra once told me, and this is also decolonization in its multiple ways. He said that uh, doctors tell us, or there, it has been a consideration that uh, apple a day keeps the doctor away. He said, not here. It may be true in Himachal Pradesh where apple, which is an apple growing country. But in Mumbai, if you read Apple, the doctor will visit every day. <laughs> so this is like linking our lifestyle to the soil to which we belong to. This is what is required. And therefore, uh, while on the one hand we have to decolonize every sphere of our public uh, activity, when we look at the future, we have to cultivate 
the younger innovators. हम सभी ने वैज्ञानिक माशेलकर जी का नाम सुना है उन्होंने एक बार मुझे कहा कि उन्होंने एक इनोवेशन के बारे में एक प्रतियोगिता रखी तो एक छात्र कॉलेज का छात्र साइंस का स्टूडेंट उसको प्रथम पुरस्कार मिला तो उसका उसका इनोवेशन क्या था तो इनोवेशन ये था कि हम सब जानते हैं कि आजकल ब्लड टेस्ट हर किसी को करनी पड़ती है और विशेष रूप में ग्रामीण अंचलों में हम देखते हैं दी रूरल वीमेन आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम हीमोग्लोबिन शॉर्टेज द परसेंटेज ऑफ हीमोग्लोबिन इज वेरी लो एस्पेशली अमंगस्ट रूरल वीमेन अर्बन वीमेन में भी ये है मगर रूरल में ज़्यादा और अर्बन वीमेन कभी कभी अपना जांच करा लेती है रूरल में तो इतना होता नहीं फिर जांच करवाने में वो जो प्रिक करते हैं उससे भी महिलाओं को बहुत परेशान किसी को भी होती है महिलाओं को और अधिक होती है डरते हैं खून निकलता है अच्छा नहीं लगता सो ही फाउंड आउट अ वे उन्होंने एक टेप विकसित किया कि जो आपकी उंगली के इर्द गिर्द आप चिपका देते हैं तो टेप के ऊपर कुछ सेंसर लगा हुआ है वो आपको बताता है कि खून में हीमोग्लोबिन का परसेंटेज कितना है यू डोंट रिक्वायर टू प्रिक सो नेचुरली ही गॉट द फर्स्ट अवार्ड इन दैट पर्टिकुलर इनोवेशन कंपटीशन एंड इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट अनु आगा आई एम श्योर मेनी ऑफ यू मस्ट हैव सीन हर पिक्चर शी इज़ ए वेरी फ्रेल लेडी शी वॉज डेयर टू प्रेजेंट दैट अवार्ड दिस यंग बॉय केम ऑन द डायस and before ask i mean getting the award before receiving the award he told uh, anu agaji requested ma'am please give me your finger aur usne wo uske upar chipkaya aur bataya ki it is just 11.15 so take care ma'am ye ye pratibha hai aur ye hamare desh mein hi hai isi mitti se nibji hui pratibha hai हमने इस प्रतिभा को आगे बढ़ाने लायक एक वायुमंडल तैयार करना चाहिए इनके पीछे खड़ा रहना चाहिए तभी जाकर के एक आत्मविस्मृत से बाहर निकला हुआ और आत्मविश्वास से प्रेरित ऐसा प्रबुद्ध भारत हम शायद निर्माण कर पाएंगे अंत में मैं केवल इतना ही कहूंगा कि आज विशेष रूप में जब हम उदीयमान भारत की बात करते हैं और जो भारत जैसे मैंने कहा कि फ्रॉम द पास थ्रू द प्रेजेंट टू द फ्यूचर इस रास्ते पर निकल पड़ा है आत्मविश्वास से निकल पड़ा है तो जरूरी है कि हम इस भारत की इस अंतहीन यात्रा में वेर देर आर नो फुल स्टॉप्स पूरी कर्तव्य बद्धता से हम प्रतिभागी हो इसके साथ आगे बढ़े ये बहुत जरूरी है क्योंकि विश्व हमारी ओर देख रहा है मैं एक बार जर्मनी गया था तो बर्लिन से मैं किसी रास्ते के कहीं जा रहा था तो ट्रेन में कुछ जर्मन युवक मुझे मिले चर्चा हुई वो भारत गए थे आठ दिन रुक के लिए गए और बोले हम महीना भर रुके वहाँ पर तो मैंने पूछा कि भारत के प्रति आपकी भावना क्या है आपके अनुभव क्या है तो उन्होंने सारी निगेटिव बातें बताई कि लोग ट्रैफिक लाइट्स को ब्रेक करते हैं करप्शन काफ़ी है बहुत जगह लेटर करते हैं सफाई नहीं होती तरह तरह की बातें सो आई वॉज क्यूरियस आई सेट आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू हैव ए नंबर ऑफ निगेटिव इम्प्रेशन अबाउट इंडिया बट टेल मी यू वेंट देयर ओनली फॉर अ वीक एंड देन एक्सटेंडेड यू स्टे फॉर अबाउट ए मंथ वॉट इज द रीजन बिहाइंड द बॉय विथ अ ब्रॉड स्माइल ऑन हिज फेस टोल्ड मी कि सर इफ यू ऑब्जर्व हियर इन यूरोप आप देखेंगे कि सब बुझी हुई आंखों के लोग हैं भारत में गरीब से गरीब व्यक्ति की आंखों में मैंने एक रोशनी देखी जिसके कारण मुझे लगा कि ये भारत में मैंने अधिक समय बिताना चाहिए लोगों के बीच रहना चाहिए मैं मानता हूँ कि उस रोशनी को प्रदीप्त करना और तेजोमय बनाना हम सब का दायित्व है उसी के लिए हमारी ये प्रबुद्ध भारत की ओर निकली हुई एक अंतहीन यात्रा है बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद